All right, welcome to part number 10 in our chapter 11 series on basic genetics. And in this episode, you're going to learn about a couple of really unique gene interactions called incomplete dominance and co-dominance. Now, you've already learned how to do Punnett square problems using a monohybrid cross where you only track one trait. And you've also learned how to do a dihybrid cross where you track two traits. Okay, so we're going to learn how we do Punnett square problems with incomplete dominance in play and with co-dominance. So let's learn about these two, all right? In incomplete dominance, you basically have a blend of the two alleles because neither allele is dominant nor is it recessive. So in the heterozygous, you have the two blend together. So a perfect example is a four o'clock plant. Now, four o'clocks are plants whose flowers will typically open and bloom right around 4 o'clock p.m. And they come in mainly two colors, red and white, but the red and the white is neither dominant nor recessive. So down here, look at your genotypes and phenotypes. If you have two, two big R's or two R's, you're going to have red flowers. And if you have two W's, you're going to have white flowers. It's the heterozygous individuals that show a blending of the traits because you're going to come out with pink flowers. Now, why don't you look over here in this picture? This picture is pretty funny because it's supposed to be four o'clock, but these are actually snapdragons. And then they're using uh, a C with an upper script instead of R and W's, which is fine to do that. I typically don't do that because I'm just too lazy. It's easier to write R's and W's so it's this extra C. Okay, so just like what Mendel would have done in his regular experiments, you have two different purebreds. You see this guy here is purebred red, and this one's purebred white. That's the only way you can be red and white. And so all of their babies are going to be pink because they're hybrids. Okay? So this would be your F1 generation, the first set of offspring. Now, you're going to take two of your F1s, and you're going to make them parents. And actually, right down here, if you look right in here, they're showing you the law of segregation. And so to figure out your F2 generation, remember your F2s are inside the boxes. And in this case, we're going to get a 1 to 2 to 1 phenotype ratio. As you can see here, you got one who's going to be red, two that are pink, one that is white. And your genotype ratio is also 1 to 2 to 1 because you have one that's two big R's two that are RW, and one that is WW, okay? Now, basically, you want to remember, when it comes to incomplete dominance, the heterozygous ones will show a blend of the two traits. That's how you can tell it's not codominance, because you have a blending of the traits during incomplete dominance. All right, let's move on to the next one, which is codominance. Now, human blood types show codominance, okay? Now, in codominance... Both alleles will contribute to the phenotypes. In other words, two phenotypes are expressed at the same time. All right? So in our humans, A, B, and O blood type, remember humans can have either type A, type B, and type O. They show codominance. And in this case, we do want to use the superscripts on our alleles. So this is a capital letter I. So an I with the superscript A, that's the type A allele, and that's a codominant. Uh, I with a superscript B will be your type B allele, which is codominant. And then for O, and sometimes the O is written as just a lowercase I with no superscript, that would be your recessive. Okay? Now, your two different your phenotype range is right down in here. If you want to be type A, you can either be AA or AO. That'll give you the two types of type A. Uh, type B will be B and B. And then BO, I think that's pretty funny. If you have type B, you can have BO. <laughs> uh, type AB, this is one that shows the codominance. Um, you have an A allele and a B allele. Now, type AB is also known as the universal recipient. It can receive blood from both type A and type B and, of course, type O. So if you ever need a blood transfusion of any sort, uh, type AB would be to your benefit because then you can receive blood from anybody. Okay. Now type O is you only you only have the two O alleles. So you can see here it's O O. Remember it could be listed as lowercase I and lowercase I. That's type O. 
Now, type O is known as the universal donor. It can give blood to any of the three blood types, both type A, type B, and type AB. Okay? Now, over here, we got a Punnett square that shows a case where an individual who has type AB is going to mate with a person who is type O. And inside here is the possibility of all their children. Now, their children can either have type A or type B blood. So in this case, the genotype ratio would be 1 to 1 because you can be AO or BO. And the phenotype ratio would also be 1 to 1 because they can either be type A or type um, B. Okay, and let's give another example here. Let's do a person who's type A and they're type AO, so they have type A, and we're going to cross it with an individual who's type B, but their genotype is BO. So let's do a little Punnett square here. And I'm just going to, I'm going to get rid of these I's just for simplicity's sake, all right? So there's the B and there's the O allele. There's the A and there's the O allele. And so we got type AB here, AO, BO, and OO. So in this case, we can get all three of the different types, or all four of the blood types. So we have a, let's do a phenotype ratio right here. Okay. We've got one that's AB, we got one that's type A, we got one that's type B, and we have one individual that's type O. And then genotype ratio, in this case, would be the same. One person has AB alleles, one person is AO, another person is BO, and another person is IO. All right, so here's an example of how you can do a co-dominance uh, Punnett square problems. Now remember the difference between the two. In incomplete dominance, we have a blending of the trait or a blending of the alleles, and you're going to see that in the heterozygous individuals. In co-dominance, the heterozygous individuals are going to express both traits. Like as you can see here, in uh, the type AB person, they're going to have both the A marker protein and the B marker protein because blood types are dealing with marker proteins. Okay. Uh, we've got three more episodes to go in this series, so until next time, we're going to catch you on the flip side.